This is Valley News Live at 5. A little relief arrived today in the form of rain. It's helping with our dry conditions, but some areas can sure use more. Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson has been tracking the rain and has more for us on the timing. Hey, Hutch. Hello, and I got to tell you, the rain is falling quite a bit and abundantly so in the Southern Valley into Lakes Country. Here are a few rainfall totals from the area. Parker's Prairie approaching two and three quarters of an inch of rain since yesterday and Otter Tail. Similar amounts. Morton, Staples, Purim, all well over an inch of rain. Fargo with two tenths, and it's really just beginning to get soggy this evening. The radar shows that that sharp cutoff line continues north and to the west of Fargo. Extremely dry, and it will continue to be that way. But a little rain, Valley City down to Edgeley. More rain in western reaches of the uh, uh, Trail County area and where you see the yellows here approaching the FM area is the batch of rain that we've uh, seen a rapid increase in our rainfall amounts. Now Detroit Lakes, it's raining good there, but a little break down in Otter Tail County. I'm sure Parker's Prairie needs a little drying out actually after over two and one half inches. Lisbon soggy through Kindred and Fargo Moorhead. The forecast, well, temperatures tonight remain warmest to the north and west where there's no rain, even a little bit of sunshine out there in the far north. 40s here and significantly more rain in the forecast for tomorrow and Friday as well. All the latest on that. We'll tell you when there's a chance our western counties could see some moisture in a few minutes. Okay, thanks, Hutch. Some law enforcement agencies in North Dakota are using a controversial facial recognition service that was built using photos from social media users without their consent. West Fargo, Bismarck, and Devils Lake Police, along with the North Dakota BCI, were named in a BuzzFeed article stating they had used Clearview AI's facial recognition tool to watch and identify suspects. The app has been scrutinized due to privacy concerns. Tonight on Valley News Live at 6, we'll tell you how the app works works and what police are saying about it. A man is seriously hurt after a rollover crash. It happened after three this morning at 6th Avenue and 8th Street Northeast near Thompson, North Dakota. The highway patrol says John and Shondo was traveling from Grand Forks to Crookston. He was heading east when he left the road. He overcorrected, then rolled his Chrysler 300 and over end. The highway patrol says charges are pending. We're now learning that Tiger Woods was driving nearly twice the speed limit when he crashed his SUV on February 23rd. The L.A. County Sheriff said that Woods was driving 84 to 87 miles per hour on a downhill stretch of road which had a speed limit of 45. The sheriff is blaming the crash solely on excessive speed and Woods' loss of control behind the wheel. Officials say there's no evidence that Woods was impaired. Today, President Joe Biden is focusing on jobs and the economy, but the heart-wrenching video of a migrant child abandoned at the border is offering another reminder of the growing humanitarian crisis threatening to overshadow his agenda. Reporter Alice Barr has the latest. Non-contaminated drinking water. President Biden today pressing Congress to get to work and pass his massive infrastructure and jobs plan. It's a plan that puts millions of Americans to work to fix what's broken in our country. Republicans argue the roughly $2 trillion proposal bankrolled by a corporate tax hike will end up costing jobs. They're also slamming the scope, going beyond hard infrastructure like roads, bridges, and broadband internet. They've sort of thrown everything but the kitchen sink into it. The president seeking to reframe the idea of infrastructure to help the nation get ahead in a changing world. We are America. We don't just fix for today, we build for tomorrow. At the same time, the White House is on defense over the surge in migrants at the southern border. Heart-wrenching new video of a frightened 10-year-old abandoned by his group in the Texas desert and found by Border Patrol highlighting the growing humanitarian crisis. <laughs> The Biden administration sending a disaster response team to address the surge at its source in El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras. Vice President Harris leading the effort. You're talking about violence. You're talking about incredible economic disparity. Um, we're looking at also in recent you know, history, cl extreme climate conditions, hurricanes and then corruption. Fight for us! 
protesters outside the vice president's home urging her to do more to help. As Republicans say, the administration's policies are encouraging families to send their children here alone. President Biden stressing he is open to compromise on his infrastructure plan and how to pay for it. He promises to bring Democrats and Republicans to the White House to negotiate and says inaction is not an option. North Dakota will receive more than $14.6 million in federal aid to expand access to coronavirus vaccine. The CDC says most of the money must go to support local health departments and community-based organizations and be used to help increase vaccine access among minority populations. Officials at Clay County Public Health are running into a new issue, using up the vaccines after receiving them. They haven't wasted any doses, but say fewer people are signing up. Clay County Public Health received 1,000 Moderna doses this week. More than 33% of Clay County residents have gotten at least one dose, while more than 22% have completed the series. Over 42% between ages 50 and 64, and 72% of those 65 and older have received the first dose. Health officials are seeing an uptick in cases this week between the ages of 20 and 24. They say it's happening more as restrictions are becoming more relaxed. With active cases, which we kind of had uh, predicted a bit, especially with, uh, you know, some of the events going on. We have, you know, sporting events. We have spring break. We have um, gatherings that are occurring. And uh, so we're seeing an uptick in active cases. Health officials continue reaching out in hopes of getting the 72-hour window to administer the vaccine extended. If you're still looking to get the vaccine, Thrifty White has many appointments open. There are more than 1,600 openings in North Dakota and more than 800 openings in Minnesota. To schedule an appointment, you can log on to thriftywhite.com slash COVID-19 vaccine. As testimony continues in the murder trial of Derek Chauvin, today his defense team pushing back on an expert witness for the prosecution who says the former Minneapolis police officer abused his power the day George Floyd died. Reporter Jay Gray has more. A week and a half in, there are two clear elements at the core of this case, both the center of today's testimony. Is that right? Yes. A Los Angeles police officer, an expert witness on the use of force for the prosecution, telling the jury Derek Chauvin violated police policy and abused his power the day George Floyd died. My opinion was that uh, no force should have been used once uh, he was in that position. Thank you for being here. The defense arguing conditions on the ground, including a gathering hostile crowd and the demeanor of the suspect, ultimately give an officer the ability to determine how much force is necessary. It may be caught on video, right? And it yes. looks bad, right? Yes. But it's still lawful. Yes, based on the, that department's policies or based on that state's law. A cornerstone of Chauvin's defense is that heart disease and drug use led to Floyd's death. Using audio from a police body cam, Chauvin's attorney for the first time today suggesting Floyd acknowledges using drugs during the confrontation. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Did it appear that Mr. Floyd said, I ate too many drugs? Yes, it did. After a break, and after Agent James Ryerson has a chance to listen to the video again, he's called back to the stand. Having heard it in context, are you able to tell uh, what Mr. Floyd is saying there? Yes, I believe Mr. Floyd was saying, I ain't do no drugs. So it's a little different than what you were asked about when you only saw a portion of the video, correct? Yes, sir. Seven. Prosecutors continuing to argue. It was another phrase Floyd used that day, I can't breathe, that defines how he died. The cause of Floyd's death is something we're going to hear about a lot in the next few days, with a medical examiner expected to testify by the end of the week. An anti-vaping campaign is being launched to educate parents to spot the signs their kids are vaping. Fargo Cass Public Health says elementary kids have been caught vaping here in Cass County. The campaign also talks about spotting nicotine addiction. For more information on how you can spot the signs and to get help on quitting tobacco products, log on to our website, valleynewslive.com. Still to come, the one thing you should remember to do before you start working on a yard project. 
and some soggy showers of rain in Ottertail County Lakes Country, the Southern Valley rainfall totals over two inches for some. Much more on the way. I'll have hour by hour details on when and where it hits your area next.